Hey guys, it's John here from Sonic Drive Studio. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to this epic lunchbox slash small slash low wattage amplifier comparison featuring 19 tube amplifiers, one solid state amp, and as a bonus, one modeling platform. I'll keep this introduction short before we start with the music. So we're comparing a wide variety of amplifiers, but they each have two things in common. One is the fact that they each have a low wattage rating of 40 watts or lower, with the exception of the Black Spirit 200. And number two is the fact that all of the amps in this comparison are quite small in comparison to the big 100 watt heads, so they're all quite portable. We're gonna compare all the amps through my usual load box setup, and all of the tones are going through one single Ohnhammer impulse response, and that is the forward three mix from the Revolution 412 Trad, which is based on a Mesa Boogie traditional cabinet loaded with a very special V30 in it. It's one of my all-time favorite impulse responses to use, and I think this video will demonstrate why that is. We're gonna start the video with full band or full mix comparisons. And as I've said before in other videos, I always recommend watching those first before checking out any isolated segments. Once those are done, you'll get to hear all the same segments, but this time isolated, so with the drums and bass turned off. It's gonna be quite a long video, so do check out the time codes in the description for easy skipping between the segments. There will be clean and heavy segments. For the clean tones, I'm using my LTD SC20 guitar, and for those tones, I'm gonna to use the single coil neck pickup. And for the driven tones, I'm gonna to use my beloved LTD James Hetfield Iron Cross model, which is equipped with EMG headset pickups. I really, really hope you guys enjoy this video. I had a blast making it, even though it took me a long time to finish. But I'm super psyched and stoked because all of the amplifiers really sound nice in this comparison. Before we go on, please consider hitting that subscribe button along with the notification bell. Dropping a like or share is also always very much appreciated. And don't forget to drop a comment in the comment section down below because I'm always super curious to know what your thoughts are. Okay, enough babble, here we go. Let's start with the amps. So the first amp that we're gonna check out today is the Wong's HD 15 15 watt amplifier head. This amplifier is the newest addition to my amplifier collection, and I must say that I'm super stoked about it. It's an amplifier that was built in China by the Wong's company, but the build and sound quality is still very high. So these things are affordable, but they are amazing. So this amplifier has a power rating of 15 watts, and it's powered by two 6V6 power tubes. And this is the only amp in this video that has 6V6 power tubes in the power section. This amp is quite versatile. You can get clean, crunch and high gain tones out of it, and they all sound great. The tones of this amplifier are loosely based on a Bogner Shiva for the low gain tones and a Soldano for the high gain tones. So yeah, this is a great addition to my collection and it's a cool amp to start this comparison with. So here we go and enjoy.
right, that sounded pretty sweet, don't you think? I really love the chime that the clean channel had and the saturation of the drive channel is just so full and fat. It does remind me of a Soldano indeed, but perhaps it has a little bit more mids, so it does work great in the mix. And now let's go to the second amplifier in this comparison, the PRS MT15 Mark Tremonti Signature Head. Now this amp is quite popular for rock and metal players for a good reason. It sounds amazing. It looks good too, it has all the great features, but the sound is just there with this amplifier. It could have to do with the fact that this amp runs on two 6L6 power tubes, and it's the only amp in this comparison that runs on 6L6s. It's only 15 watts, just like the previous amplifier, but it does have a lot of power indeed. The clean tones are very clean with a lot of headroom, nice and bright, and the drive tones are tight, huge, and quite aggressive. On the lead channel, it definitely has more mid-range cut and punch than, say, a Mesa Boogie Rectifier, which is a very scooped amp, but it still kind of sounds like a Mesa Boogie-esque USA amplifier. So yes, this amplifier is simply awesome. It's solid, it's affordable, and it's reliable. Let's check it out. Well, there you go. This amp does not disappoint. Now let's move on to the next amplifier in this comparison, the Orange OR15. This is the only lunchbox sized orange amplifier that comes with the classic orange head shell. The preamp design of this amplifier is quite similar to the orange rocker verb heads, but with some slight tonal variations. It's only a one channel amplifier like some of the other smaller orange heads, but despite that fact, it's still very versatile. There's plenty of gain on tap, so this amp is great for rock and metal, but it also has some really nice clean tones. It's probably not as modern, cutting and raw sounding as some of the other amps in this comparison, but it's still a very cool amplifier. And this amp, like many other amps in this comparison, runs on two EL84 tubes in the power section. Let's go ahead and check this amplifier out. Here we go.
All right, that sounded pretty great, don't you think? It really does have that sort of signature fat and fluffy orange sound. I like it. Next up is the German Engel Iron Ball amp, also a very popular lunchbox amplifier, especially for metal, since this amp is known for its tight, aggressive and clear high gain tones. The cleans are also great though. It's built like a tank because of its German engineering and it's also quite portable. And this amp also runs on two EL84 tubes in the power section. And this amp offers some nice extra features aside from the usual stuff, such as a power soak and a gain boost. So yeah, I think this amp is quite awesome and I love it especially for metal, even though it's quite a versatile amp. It sounds quite similar to the bigger angle heads. Let's go ahead and take a listen to this very small behemoth. Here we go. That sounded quite aggressive, cutting and huge, but with great cleans, a great amplifier. Now let's move on to the first Marshall amplifier in this comparison, the SC20H Studio Classic or JCM800 Mini. So this is the 20 watt version of the JCM800 that we all love and know so well. It's more of a classic sounding amp in comparison to some of the other amps in this comparison, but I do love its character a lot. All of the Studio Series amps are fitted with two EL34s in the power section, and this amp is no exception. And these amps are built and constructed in the UK. These amps are fairly large for a lunchbox amplifier, but they're still very lightweight, which makes them very portable as well. So they have a great sound, wonderful cleans, and a very nice and raw distortion. Not super high gain, but more than enough gain to get your rock on. For a more detailed and classic sounding comparison of all the 20 watt Marshall heads, do check out my 20 watt Marshall comparison, which I'll link in the description below. All right, let's check out this awesome mini JCM 800. Here we go.
oh yeah, that sounded great. And I think it performed surprisingly well with the high gain tones, especially considering it's not really a high gain amplifier. It really does have that classic JCM 800 tone. Great amp overall. Let's move on to the next amplifier in this comparison, the Mesa Boogie Mini Rectifier 25. Now this amplifier is easily one of my favorite amplifiers of all time, mainly because I'm just a recto fan and this thing is just so tiny and cute, but it still sounds so awesome and huge. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. It's a tiny 25 watt amplifier fitted with two EL84s in the power section, but it still sounds absolutely huge. It really does have that famous and familiar Mesa recto sound. Perhaps it's a little bit tighter sounding than the bigger recto heads, but it still sounds very huge and especially in the mix. Clean and crunch tones on this amplifier are awesome, but I do think that this amplifier shines in the high gain department, especially on the modern voicing on channel two. It's not as affordable as the other amps as it's made in the USA, but it's still a very cool amplifier that I highly recommend checking out. Now let's go ahead and listen to this tiny monster. Here we go. Yeah, that sounded pretty awesome. I don't know what else to say. Now let's move on to the legendary Orange Tiny Terror amplifier. That classic 15 watt orange lunchbox amplifier that probably started it all. This amplifier is basically the definition of lunchbox amps. It has a low wattage rating and it's nice and tiny. This amp is very simple and elegant, but despite the fact that it's very simple, it's still a very versatile amp. Just as with the Orange OR15, this amp can handle anything from very nice cleans all the way up to really huge and raw sounding high gain tones. This is easily my favorite orange head out of the bunch and is probably due to the fact that the high gain tones cut through the mix so nicely. And just as with the other small orange heads in this comparison, this amp is also fitted with two EL84 tubes in the power section. Okay, let's go ahead and listen to this amplifier right now. Here we go.
All right, that sounded awesome indeed. You just gotta love those little orange amps. Now let's move on to another one of my favorites, the Hughes & Kettner Grand Meister Deluxe 40 amplifier. With its 40 watts of power, this is the tube amp with the highest wattage rating in this comparison. It's an amazing amplifier with a ton of features, so we're only gonna scratch the surface with the tones in this comparison. So this amplifier is fitted with four EL84 tubes in the power section, and this thing can do it all. It has four channels, a clean channel, a crunch channel, a lead channel, and an ultra channel, and you have the additional gain boost on top of that, not to mention all the effects that the amp has to offer. This amp is still very small and portable despite having all those awesome features. I'm a big Hughes and Kettner fan. I love this amplifier. So let's go ahead and see how this thing sounds in the mix. Here we go. That was great. I really love how that sounded in the mix. Especially with high gain tones, it had so much definition and clarity. Just awesome. And the blue color looks kind of cool too, don't you think? All right, let's move on to the next Marshall amplifier in this comparison, the 2525H Silver Jubilee Studio. And this is another one of the smaller Studio Series amp pads from Marshall, and it's basically the 20 watt version of the Silver Jubilee reissue. And mine probably looks a little bit different than what you're used to seeing. That's because mine is the limited edition in split vinyl. And this amp is probably a little bit more versatile than some of the other Marshalls in this comparison. And that is because of its tonal shaping features such as the rhythm pull clip and the two channel option. It's probably not as raw sounding as the SC20H or the SV20H, but it still sounds great and it has a wide range of tones in it. Just as with the other Marshall Studio Series amps, this thing is fitted with two EL34 tubes. Let's go ahead and take a listen to this amp right now. Here we go.
All right, this Marshall also sounded great. Perhaps the sound of the distortion was a little bit more tubby than with the SC20H, but it still has a great sound. Now let's move on to the next amplifier in this comparison, the PV6505MH. This amp is a great but very small approximation of that classic 5150 or 6505 sound in a 20 watt package. Despite being so small, this amp sounds quite similar to the bigger 6505, which I have here behind me. It's very compact, very lightweight, and it's also equipped with two EL84s in the power section. This amp has some great clean and crunch tones, but the lead tones on this thing are simply amazing. It's also an amp that works very well at very low levels for practicing and stuff. It's affordable, it's compact, and it sounds amazing, so that's a win-win on many levels. Now let's go ahead and check this amplifier out. Here we go. Yep, just as I expected, this amplifier sounds great in the mix. Let's move on to the next orange amplifier in this comparison, the Orange Jim Root Terror. Just as with the OR15, this amplifier is based on the rocker verb. In fact, this amp shares the same PCB as the OR15. It does not sound exactly the same as the OR15 though, so keep that in mind. This amp is very small and elegant. In fact, it looks quite similar to the Dark Terror by Orange, but I do think that the Jim Root sounds much, much better than the Dark Terror. Two EL84s in the power section, just as with the other Oranges, so no surprise there. Uh, the controls are very limited, also just as with the other Oranges, but it's still quite versatile. So that's a common thread that you'll notice with all of the Oranges. Simple designs, but with a great and versatile sound. So yeah, I basically love this amplifier. Now let's go ahead and see how it sounds in the mix. Here we go.
right, I think that that sounded awesome. Now let's move on to the next amplifier in this comparison, the Laney IRT Studio. This is the only amplifier in this comparison that comes in rack form, and it's basically a smaller 15 watt version of the well-known Ironheart heads by Laney. In fact, I think it shares the exact same preamp design because it sounds so very similar to my bigger Ironheart 60 that I have over here. This amp has a lot of great features and tonal shaping options. We've got three channels, we've got the push-pull EQ going on, we've got some reverb and some direct out options and all of that stuff. So it's a great and versatile amplifier with a raw sound for the high gain tones and a very nice clean tone and everything in between. And this amp is also equipped with two EL84s in the power section. I think this amplifier is a bit of an underdog in this comparison, but I do enjoy it a lot myself. It does sound great and it's very portable and lightweight as well. Now let's go ahead and check out this amplifier in the mix. Here we go. Oh yeah, just as I expected, this thing performs very well in the mix. Just a great little amplifier, so do check them out. Now let's move on to yet another Marshall amplifier, the SV20H 1959 SLP Plexi Mini Head. This is the third amp from the 20 watt studio series, just as the JCM 800 and Silver Jubilee. This is probably the most classic and old school sounding amp of all of the amps in my collection, but I do love the sound a lot. But despite the fact that this amp is quite low gain, I think it performs really well in the high gain sections of this comparison. Just as with the other studio heads, this thing is equipped with two EL34s in the power section. And yeah, I basically love this amp a lot. I do think it sounds unique and that's why I love it so much. This is easily one of my favorite Marshall amps because it has such a distinct and classic sound. Now keep in mind that this thing is very, very loud, but it's still very portable and lightweight. I can highly recommend this amplifier for that classic Marshall Plexi sound. Let's go ahead and listen to this awesome amplifier right now.
All right, I think that sounded very, very good. Definitely quite different than all the other amps that we've demoed before, but it definitely has a very classic and distinct sound. Now let's move on to a very different kind of beast, the Mesa Boogie Mark 535. This is basically the smaller 35 watt version of the bigger Mark 5, and its design is very similar to the smaller Mark 525 but this one has more headroom due to the fact that it has four EL84 tubes in the power section. This amp is also quite versatile because of all the tonal shaping features that it has to offer, such as the voicing options on the channels and also the famous Mesa graphical equalizer, of course. It can take a while to master this amplifier, but once you get it down, it sounds absolutely amazing. This amp can sound very focused, tight and articulate. The cleans are great. For the cleans in this demo, we're using the fat voicing on channel one, and for the heavy tones, we're using the extreme voicing on channel two, with the GEQ engaged for the high gain tones. This amplifier was made in the United States, so it's definitely the most expensive amplifier in this comparison. Let's go ahead and listen to this awesome amplifier right now. Here we go. Yeah, just as I expected, this thing sounds amazing. The cleans sound very open and sparkly, and the drive sound is just to die for. So tight and focused, just awesome. Now let's move on to another orange amplifier. This one is the Rocker 15 Terror Head. This is one of the more recent orange lunchbox amplifier heads, and it's 15 watts and it has two channels. So it has a natural channel with only one level control and a drive channel. With its 15 watts, this amp is also fitted with two EL84s in the power section. I think this amp is quite versatile, but it's probably one of the more vintage sounding orange amps in my collection. The sound is a bit more warm and fluffy when compared to the other oranges. So the drive characteristics are basically a little bit more round and mid-focused sounding. The clean tones are quite nice, especially considering the fact that this channel only has one control for the level, and the drive channel really does that classic orange sound very well. The amp is slightly bigger and wider than the Tiny Terror, but it's still very portable and small and quite affordable as well. This amp looks the same as the Brent Heinz Terror, which we're going to check out in a few minutes, but it does sound very different indeed. Now let's go and check out this awesome amplifier by Orange. Here we go.
And again, a really great sounding orange amplifier in this comparison. I really enjoyed the sound of that amplifier a lot. Now let's move on to a very different beast, the EVH 5153LBX. This is basically the 15 watt tiny lunchbox version of the well-known EVH 5153. Now this is the first version with only the blue and red channels. So this amplifier has no clean channel at all. The LBX2 does clean tones with its green channel, but the drive tones are a bit less suited for metal. So I prefer the LBX1 that I have right now over the LBX2. There's also an LBX Stealth coming out soon, which has the green and red channels. So that could be a very great option for metal players out there who also want a great clean channel. So this amp has the same size as the Tiny Terror by Orange, and it's also equipped with two EL84s in the power section. It has a very tight, aggressive and focused sound, just as the bigger EVH heads. Since there are no clean channels on this amp, I just used the blue channel with very low gain settings for the clean tones. Let's go ahead and listen to this amplifier right now. Here we go. Alright, that was a very cool amplifier indeed, especially in the high gain department, obviously. Now let's move on to the fourth and final Marshall amplifier in this comparison. This time we're going to check out the Marshall DSL20HR. This is basically the 20 watt version of the DSL. It's the same size as the Studio Series and it's also equipped with two EL34s, but this one is not made in the UK, this one is made in Vietnam. So it's quite affordable because of that fact and it does have a very different sound indeed. The clean tones are very spanky, bright and sparkly and the drive tones are geared more to high gain players in my opinion. The gain tones are a little bit fizzy but it turns out that that works quite well in the mix. So this amp is also pretty affordable and portable and it does sound pretty good. So let's see how it sounds in the mix right now. Here we go.
All right, that sounded pretty cool and interesting. I think it sounded great in the mix, but definitely a bit brighter than the other amps so far. Now let's move on to the only solid state amp in this comparison, the Hughes and Kettner Black Spirit 200. So this amplifier has a power rating of 200 watts, but I just had to include this amplifier because of its size and portability. I definitely think it classifies as a lunchbox amplifier. It's a bit smaller and much lighter than the Grandmeister Deluxe 40, but it has almost all of the same features and it does sound great. Do check out my in-depth demo of this amplifier. And if you're interested, also check out the Grandmeister Deluxe 40 versus Black Spirit 200 video. And you can also find that video on this channel. So far, I've really enjoyed working with this amplifier and I think it looks really cool too. So definitely check this amp out. Let's go ahead and see how this amp sounds in the mix. Here we go. Oh yeah, that sounded awesome. I don't know what else to say, I just think it sounded awesome in the mix. Let's move on to the next orange amplifier in this comparison, the Dual Terror. This is basically the bigger 30 watt version of the famous Tiny Terror. And it's basically two Tiny Terrors in one, only one of the channels is modded and that's the fat channel. This thing definitely is a bit bigger and heavier than the Tiny Terror, but it's still a fairly portable amplifier. For this comparison, I'm only gonna use the fat channel as we've already covered the Tiny Terror channel on the Tiny Terror itself. This amp is equipped with four EL84 tubes in the power section. Now let's go ahead and take a listen to the Orange Dual Terror.
All right, folks, that sounded really, really good. Now let's move on to the final tube amplifier in this comparison, the orange Brent Heinz Terror. This was the signature amplifier for Brent Heinz of Mastodon. This amp has a very unique and raw sound to it, which I really enjoy, but it's quite different than the other orange heads that I have. In fact, I think it sounds more like a pissed off Marshall. It's not a super high gain head, but it has a very distinct sound, so it sounds very unique in comparison to the other amps in this video. This is a 15 watt amplifier, and it's also equipped with two EL84s in the power section. It's also a two channel amplifier, so it also has the natural channel and a drive channel. The cleans are nice too, slightly darker sounding than the cleans of the Rocker 15 Terror, but still very nice. Now let's go ahead and check this amp out. Here we go. All right, that was awesome. I think that amp performed very well in the mix indeed, very cool. Keep in mind that they don't make those amps anymore. So if you want one, you're gonna have to get one used. And now finally, as a bonus, we're also gonna check out the HX Stomp by Line 6. Now this obviously is not a tube amplifier. It's a digital modeling platform in a very small package. And that's exactly the reason why I wanted to include it. And it's also very fun and interesting to see how far the digital emulations have come. I basically included it to offer a different perspective. I'm personally a big fan of the Line 6 Helix products and the HX Stomp is no exception. I think it's an awesome product, it sounds great and it has a lot of stuff to offer. I'll just let you guys decide how it sounds in comparison to all the tube amplifiers, okay? And of course, keep in mind that if you wanna do a gig with this thing, you're gonna need some sort of power amp to amplify the signal. Let's go ahead and listen to the HX Stomp right now. Here we go.
right, guys, that's it for this comparison. I really, really hope you enjoyed that. Now, of course, you can stick around to listen to the isolated segments of all the amplifiers and the HX Stomp. And remember, for easy skipping, do check out the time codes in the description. And don't forget to hit subscribe along with the notification bell. Also, follow Sonic Drive Studio on Facebook and Instagram. Drop a like, share the video as that helps me out immensely. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers! Thank you.